Aloha, hey everybody, Amy Moonsong, and I'm gonna be doing a collective reading for everybody who watches this video today and myself. Uh, I have two decks for us today, and today is December 16th, 2022, and the reason why I chose to do the collective reading today is because um, we are in the last time corridor of Sagittarius, so we are approaching Capricorn season and this puts us in a little bit of a shifty and intense kind of energy, not in a negative way, but just like shifty as in things are, you might be just feeling a lot of rapid movement, a lot of like your mind is moving quickly, um, which also might be causing you to feel tired. Uh, you might be getting a lot of new ideas and you might be starting to also feel the slowdown, um, which is more of like our earth-based ramping up of how am I going to put my ideas into motion. Um, so there's a lot of things that you might be feeling right now. If that resonates with you, if not, that's okay too. But either way, it just felt like a good time to pull on some guidance just for each of us who's watching um, to be able to walk our paths with a little bit more grace, ease, and focus. So we're going to go ahead and mm -hmm. just take a deep breath and hop in here. So. I have two different decks that I'm going to be using today. One that you're used to seeing, which is the Druid Craft Tarot deck. And then a newer deck I have by Alana Fairchild, who's one of my favorite Oracle uh, Oracle deck creators. Um, this one is called Sacred Rebels. Um, I haven't had a lot of time spent with this deck, so I'll probably be reading to you straight off of whatever card comes up. But these are the decks that the Pendulum chose today. So let's see which one we're going to be pulling first. It looks like we're going to be pulling from Sacred Rebels first. And I apologize for any extra noise or people walking by the door. There is construction going on here where I'm living and sometimes it just cannot be avoided. not gonna lie you guys I'm feeling a little bit tired <laughs> it just feels like things have been very one thing into the next one thing into the next without the downtime just one thing into the next not again not negative just so much movement and that just can kind of build up you know I had kind of a, a uh, long night last night Mm. <laughs> uh, this is our card it's called going beyond normal it's some really interesting imagery here yeah that's a little bit of what I felt like last night but oh wow and it's buttons buttons and a gold light bulb interesting okay so before I pull or I'm gonna keep pulling And I'll pull from my Druid Craft deck. And this is just gonna make things move a little faster for us. This is, a, this is a great card for, for Sagittarius. Um, even though Sagittarius is a fire sign, fire is, uh, that's our passion, that's our drive, that's our ability to get up and go and the courage to get up and go. But that can be really difficult when, you're, when you want 
a lot of different things and you're not 100% sure which thing that you want is the right way to go. Um, you might be trying to make a decision about something where it's like you want to make the right decision. You want to do what's what's best for everybody or you're just really struggling to, to be sure that the decision that you're making is going to have the best long-term effects. And again, if this is part of your internal process, you're right on time because the energy that we're in is going to facilitate this process. But I do want to go ahead and read the description of going beyond normal because I think that's going to help us frame the Seven of Cups. Also, I'm going to check and see um, if we need to pull one more. Okay, my bad. We need to pull one more. So the story's not over yet. much fun <laughs> I'm trying to be all smiley and cheerful but I'm like it's not necessarily feeling super smiley and cheerful um, this is the seven of swords which um, interesting we have two sevens coming up here this is really significant actually because the sevens are always it, the sevens are always where things whatever it is you're going through it gets taken to the next level so it's sort of like there's how we personally deal with an obstacle or, or dealing on the base level. Like, I, I think the best way to put it into perspective is to look at it through the suit of wands. Um, and in the first part of the suit of wands, you're just learning how to identify your own will and your own drive. And you're learning how to balance that and establish that and, and how to harmonize it. But by the time you get to the seven of wands, it's about how you exercise that will when there's opposition coming at you. It's when you have to take what's inside of you, outside of you, and you have to take it to a new level of strategy or expertise because you have counter energies coming at you. So the seven of cups and the seven of swords are both cards that require you to take your elemental games to another level. So in one hand we have the it's the emotional, it's the emotional world. It's having conflicting feelings, you know. Um, the seven of swords, it's the mental world. Or you could say that it's about having conflicting thoughts, but the seven of swords is also a card of really needing to go back and take a second look at what's happening. A lot of times this card comes up when there's again something shifty going on um, which could mean that there is someone around you that's not being fully transparent about what's happening or you're not being fully transparent with yourself about what's happening another good question that you want to ask a lot of times when the seven of swords comes up is with whatever it is that's going on are you trying to take the easy way out um, and especially when this is happening, it's like, well, I'm not, I'm not really sure what I want, or I want a lot of different things, or I want to try to have it all. It's like, are you, are you really fully on the level with yourself about what it is that, like where you are with everything or, or what's really required of you or what's really responsible of you in the situation. And the truth may be that you really just don't know the answer. But these are the kinds of energies that are coming up right now. Just to say like, look, these are some of the energies that we're gonna wanna start to consider as we're moving towards this new moon, as we're moving towards Capricorn season. And let's see. Okay, so that's those are all the cards that we're going to pull. And let's see if we can create a little bit more perspective for the Seven of Cups and the Seven of Swords because this is requiring that we go beyond normal. Again, Seven is taking it to the next level. Seven is asking you to, to go higher and to go deeper and to see more. Uh, to to find out that you're capable of more than you thought you were um, So let's take a look here Going beyond normal. Let's see what the message is 
It says, on the path of life, there are deciding moments where we can choose to go with the mainstream or we can dare to take a bolder, more authentic and trusting way, even if it seems riskier or less safe. To rely solely on logic and science without incorporating the mysterious and magical is a recipe for an existence that is far too dry. I just realized that my microphone, number one, is not on me, and number two is just kind of laying here. So if things sounded a little strange, now you know why. Okay. To rely solely on logic and science without incorporating the mysterious and magical is a recipe for an existence that is far too dry. The sacred rebel within our hearts will always choose a juicier approach to life. You're currently approaching such a choice point. You could say that choice is about balance. It is less about choosing to honor either art or science, gardening or agriculture, and more about integrating all approaches so that you can enhance rather than hinder your life journey. Placing science or architecture above all else kills off the rebellious heart. Steadfastly relying on logic, proof, and a complete set of plans to measure and dictate outcomes will suffocate the soul. Basing decisions on limited factors with an imbalanced measure of success is unnecessarily limiting. Hmm. This approach prevents us from living freely, spontaneously, and with trust so that we can rebel against the need for things to go strictly according to plan. <laughs> Choose to value decisions based on passion and instinct and trust in life enough to embrace it as an adventure and let it unfold as it will. Yeah, okay. We're getting some pretty heavy Sagittarius vibes here. Take the risk. Broaden the perspective, go on the adventure. There is a time and a place for logic, strategy, planning, and measurable outcomes. These are not bad tools to have, but we must be vigilant not to worship them or allow them to quash our less rational but equally valuable decision-making tools. Intuition, feelings, and those things you know without knowing how you know them. The flowing inspirational energy of the heart may have no conceivable basis in logic or reason and still be uncannily accurate. To remain rebellious, we must not sacrifice the art of emotion, instinct, passion, and intuition for the science of logic and strict planning. On the other hand, gardening and art do provide us with a plan, albeit more loosely held. This plan still requires us to set aside time to draw upon reliable methods and to prepare with certain tools. However, there is also a healthy dose of organic flow, responsiveness and trust in the creative process of bringing something to life. This leads to the cultivation of the most beautiful, abundant and successful garden and the most vivid healing art. You are being asked to stay open to the intuitive approach in your life, your work, your creativity, as well as in your spiritual journey. The intuitive approach can be likened to the method of a garden gardener or an artist. There is a sense of what might work where um, um, and a loose or even detailed plan, but how the plan is carried out will depend on and respond to the flow of its surroundings. That sentence. There is a sense of what might work where, oh, what might work where and a loose or even detailed plan but how the plan is carried out will depend on and respond to the flow of its surroundings. There is no need to control the situation, but rather a desire to nurture an idea to fruition. Okay, I'm going to stop for a second and speak to this because there is just a very clear sense of uh, this example about gardening is very close to my heart right now. Um, because I was speaking to a friend of mine the other day and we were actually working on a gardening project together and he was saying that, you know, like, it's all about the prep because if you can just do the work to get all the prepping for your gardening and you've got your tools, you've got your soil prepped, then you just sit down and you create. You know, then, then it goes so much faster. But 
I took that a step further because I realized that as I interact with the Aina of Hawaii, the land here, which is a thing, it's a total thing, that there's something in me that wakes up and there's something in the land that takes over and starts to say, like, this is what I want you to do. <laughs> you know, this is how I want, this is where I want the plants. This is what I want. You know, you could start off with an idea, but if you're really rigidly holding on to that idea, a lot of times your gardening project kind of might go awry because it really is a creative process. And that's one of the things that this island, if you are sensitive and, and, you, and if you are on the spiritual path will teach you, is that you cannot stay attached to your idea of how things need to be and that resistance will only cause destruction basically so it is that but it's also not about total surrender it's about the ebb and flow of being able to bring your creative spirit and your creative willingness but have that conversation have that relationship with whatever it is that you're creating and especially if it's another person or the land be ready to shift as the story unfolds itself. And there really is kind of a paradoxical energy that's being brought up here where it's like the ideas that we have, the way we go about planning for them to happen, logic that we have to utilize in order to get that done, um, as well as the creative energy, it's a little bit paradoxical to be like, okay, so I need to plan it out, I need to have vision, but then I also at the same time need to be open um, I need to be willing to let go when it's time to let go but if you watch the temperance video then that's really what what this is about this is this is like temperance energy in action that's saying you've got all of these parts of yourself that are so able to assist you but any one of these parts of yourself when held with rigidity or with a complete lack of responsibility um, will, will work against you, right? Uh, but if you find that, that balance point with them, then you're able to experience your ability to have a relationship with yourself, your ability to have a relationship with life, and your decision-making process in a very different way, but it really does require that you're just fully present. I think a lot of times it's so much easier to just go on autopilot. This is how I make the decisions. This is just how I am, which kind of leads to the next part um, that I wanted to read, which says, you may have pressure around you from the world or from your own conditioned nature to do things according to the rules, to a deadline or to the accepted, accepted mainstream view that you need a well thought out plan for success in a commercial venture. However, sometimes the best plan is to do what feels intuitively truthful in the moment and to trust that you are being led towards your own growth. Uh, adopting this approach may mean that you have to do far less planning and a lot more living. Mm. Ooh. It's a pure and heart-centered way to manifest your art, your life path, your essence into practical expression in the world. It involves a willingness to be led by nature instead of trying to control the powerful force of life, which is a bit like trying to fit a proverbial ocean into a teacup. It's far more intelligent to allow the ocean to be the ocean and to learn to swim in it rather than trying to cram it into a vessel that is much too small. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I feel it. I resonate with this a lot. Um, I find that if I'm trying to adopt a new way of being or I'm trying to approach a decision um, with a more spiritually conscious mindset, what I have to be really mindful of are the old limited ways of thinking and the old scarcity driven ways of thinking that just kind of come up and go uh, like I think I'm in that spiritual flow but I, I, I just might have had a thought that then goes to a logical place of like well but you can't do this because of that because everybody knows that that's true and I don't even realize I've done that everybody knows that that's true and that's now become a part of my 
process instead of being like, oh, wait, I just went into an old limiting belief that it can only be this way. And that's now become part of my decision making process. So I think that this is, this is, okay, this is saying like, there's, there's some emotional convolution because, because whatever decision it is, there's a lot of emotions attached to it. And there's a lot, I'm not sure if it's the right one. And I'm not sure if this is the right thing. You know, I, I'm, I'm feeling emotionally uh, divided on this. And this is more of like, this is saying like, look, take your time with this. Um, have some strategy with this because and maybe maybe go back over your whole decision making process to begin with because you might have brought in some limiting some limiting more logic based or just or maybe limiting emotion based um, energy into the situation where it needs more intuition um, again, I'm never going to encourage somebody not to be logical about the way that they make decisions. We have a mind for a reason, but be, be responsible enough to go back and say, if I am wanting to live a life that is informed by something greater, like that is informed by the, the mysterious guidance that I absolutely know is present in my life, then especially when things are moving quickly and when there's a lot going on, I might need to go back and, and really reassess um, how I've made my decisions up to this point. And this also reminds me of just a, an experience I had shortly after coming here where I was like, I found myself in this very just kind of in this locked in position about a decision that I had to make because I had made myself all of these promises about things that I would or wouldn't do. And then I realized I was like, wait, I made these promises to myself when I was back in this mindset, which had not yet had these experiences, which did not yet understand this thing, you know, in the real time present moment of what I now know. And then holding on to the old promises I made to myself really because I was afraid of what my capacity was or wasn't. I had to just acknowledge like, oh, my heart was really in the right place where I said, yes, I'll do this or no, I won't do this. My heart was was in that present moment, but it didn't. But but to say I have to draw this hard line and say, like, yes or no, absolutely. Was more about my fear of what I didn't know I would or wouldn't be capable of like when I was in that moment where I was saying you know what I'm not helping myself by keeping promises to an old version of me that actually couldn't see what was going to happen and so this is kind of like the, con the, the, the conceptualizing that I'm wanting to do for whatever process it is that you're in is to just say take another look go back um Okay, and then this is the end of the this is the end of the oracle. It says, "This oracle brings you a special piece of guidance. You're moving outside of the plan. You're living on the border of what is socially accepted. This is good. This is fringe dwelling freedom. Others might not see this about you straight away, as you seem pretty normal. <laughs> but that secret eccentric streak is just waiting to show itself. And maybe you're an out and proud fringe dweller, completely comfortable with this way of being." Either way, this oracle brings you the message that you now have a chance to live from the heart more deeply and expressively than ever before. It wants you to realize that this is a legitimate, empowered, and creative way to live that honors all of who you are. You can give up forcing or squashing yourself down into a very limited set of so-called desirable qualities like intellect and control. If you're yet to relate to this consciously, the oracle brings the further message that it you're going to be breaking with tradition, perhaps not entirely, but at least in a way that's meaningful to you. This will require you to have the courage and your conviction and faith in your heart's truths. This will help you and inspire others around you to step out of fear and live more freely and lovingly. 
you're not necessarily meant to abandon logic and intellect altogether. You're to use them to serve the desires of the heart rather than to replace its naturally spontaneous and truthful nature with controlled planning and narrow strategy. It's time to get a bit wild and let nature take its course. Hmm. The other thing I think is really perfect about this message is that Capricorn is so much about really be getting responsible and getting things done. Where Sagittarius is about belief systems and um, can be rigidly a know-it-all, like I know the thing, and and, and um, can be very can get locked into its belief systems, or it can be really expansive with its ability to create new belief systems, you know, to grow and to alchemize. Um, but what I think is really important here is is this ability to to move this idea forward, this um, this this overall perspective of like have the logic definitely have the logic have every part of you involved in what you're doing but be mindful if you've chosen the spiritual path if you've chosen the path of becoming more than just, just becoming more of you then you have to be honest and responsible with how you're making your decisions and when it's time to reassess the belief systems that you're bringing to anything. And um, gosh, Molly had the most, she had such a great example in her last podcast and I'm trying to grasp it, but it's a little bit difficult because again, as I said, I didn't sleep very well. Um, oh, she was just, she was talking about how one of the maturing traits of Sagittarius is that we can have our belief systems, but we don't have to take everybody else with us. That we can we can be comfortable with what we with what we believe and with how we're doing what we're doing. But if we have to spend a lot of time convincing other people why or that they should do the same, then we're really not doing we're not we're really not doing what we're doing from a very empowered place um, we're doing it from a fearful place that needs that needs everybody else to think and look like us and and especially if you are trying to go outside of the box with how you live your life in whatever way right you know you're that sacred rubble this can be a place that really hangs you up and um Wow, we're going on like almost 30 minutes now. So <laughs> part of me feels like this reading was a little bit all over the place. It probably wasn't as much as I feel like it was. It's just that this is really dynamic energy. And like I said too, I think that a lot of us are tired. We're like, oh, oh. And so I think this is just a checking in that says like, yeah, you're tired. And there's a lot going on and there's decisions that you have to make because there's a, a push that's about to happen where you're about to be able to make some things really real for yourself, whether it's just changing how you think about something like like you're about to be able to make that really happen for yourself. And this is just guidance that's like, look, just be really mindful and heartful, you know, and spiritual and intuitive about how you take your steps forward because because that power to create the next cycle or to finish off this current cycle before we create the next cycle is really strong and um and and if we want to do it as cleanly as we can we have to step into this deeper level of responsibility even when we're tired and not fall back on whatever it is that we fall back on you know, that's other than what it is that we're really wanting to choose for ourselves right now. So I really hope that that makes sense. I hope that this was helpful. Um, I appreciate you guys being here with me um, because this this was for me <laughs> just as much as it was for all of you. Um, and I, I, I really, I really, really resonate. So um, I'll be coming out with the Nine of Wands video just to, so that we have this deeper understanding of what this final time quarter or Sagittarius is uh, sometime this week. 
and I look forward to hearing from all of you um, how this reading resonated with you. Um, I am still running all of my readings for 50% off right now just because I've moved and everything's kind of shifting and changing and I'm just really wanting to create some momentum being able to do more of these personal readings for you guys which has been absolutely wonderful. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to you for now. Um, please like and subscribe to this YouTube video. You can find me on Facebook at Moonsong Tarot. You can also find me on Instagram at Moonsong Tarot. And my website is still not up yet, but if you want to contact me in other any other way besides Instagram or Facebook, you can reach me by email at moonsong707 at gmail.